In this video, we'll be money coaching a Counter-Strike streamer. We're gonna deep dive into their finances, goals, talk about real estate, and how much money they spend on Counter-Strike cases, which is a lot. We have lots of these coaching sessions coming up, so I do hope you subscribe, but most importantly, I hope you learned something. Why don't we get started? You wanna just introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm Mike, um, also known as Killdozer. I've only been streaming for about nine months. I think nine months. I started with a tick. I made I made TikTok videos, um, and then people wanted me to start streaming, so I started streaming, and the stream started doing better. And then eventually, I got enough people in my Twitch streams where I was kind of just like, I don't really want to work anymore. I'd rather just try doing this. And I think I'm young enough where I can kind of uh, go for that path instead of the normal nine to five job. Um, so that's kind of what I did. So I've been doing that for. I don't know, maybe maybe full time stream for like six months now, um, and it's been going pretty well. It's like uh, yeah, sometimes I almost think like I never knew, I never imagined this would be my like my job, quote unquote job. But like, uh, and I still don't think it will be like forever. I don't even know how much. It's like it's like not day by day, but it's like if one day everything just goes away, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, um, I don't really have a backup plan, but um, that's just kind of how streaming I think I think goes. Um, but I have a pretty decent group of people now that support me, so so I'm pretty pretty confident every day. But it's like I, I don't want to say it's like uh, living the dream because I I really just stream for a couple hours a day and that's pretty much all I do. Um, because there is other things that I want to accomplish and stuff, but I think it's um it's a pretty good spot to be in right now. I'm pretty happy with, with where it's at, and I pretty much just stream exclusively Counter Strike. Um, I'm big into Counter Strike skins and case openings. By the way, 19 and 0 on 1v1s. Just started doing them this week. I'm 19 and 0. Former global elite in CS:GO. I don't just talk the talk. I can walk the walk as well. But I mainly just open cases on my stream all day and give away skins. I give away a skin like every day. So that's kind of what I do. And I stream on Twitch and TikTok, and then I stream on Kick as well after my Twitch streams. All right, y'all heard that? Go on and follow. Wow, so full-time streamer, about six months now. And where are you located? I'm in uh, California, San Diego. San Diego. Love yep, it. A very, very cheap place to live. Indeed. <laughs> lowest taxes in the country, right? <laughs> yeah. Lowest everything. Dude, I when I when I got out of college and I did my when I first my first year of the pontoon boat business, I think that summer I probably made like twenty grand. The first summer I ever did it. Nice. It was like halfway through. So twenty grand is crazy because all I did was drive drunk people around on a pontoon boat in the bay. Um, with just girls just hitting on me the whole time, and uh, it's it's crazy. It's like literally like living the dream. Like what I'm, uh, I was, I, I've been with my girlfriend for my fiance now for like nine years. So I was still hooked up at that point. Uh -huh. But it was like if you're a single dude, that was like the job to have. Wow. Um, but I wanted to be, I wanted to be um, uh, like a day trader. So I think all the money I made in the first year I did that, I lost day trading. <laughs> um, you hear that really folks interesting. <laughs> don't know but the thing with day trading is it's really it's 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 definitely doable you can do it if you have the patience but it requires a lot of strict rules like you have to sit there and make the right move every time and not do anything that could constitute gambling because it's very easy to click a button and just say well maybe it'll do this and then you just lose all your money yeah, and that's what I did. I didn't have the patience for that. Uh huh. You got emotional. Yeah, I know a lot of people that I. It wasn't so much emotional, like, oh, I'm losing. I need to put money in. I was, I was doing fine, but it was like, oh, I need to win. I need to get more. I need, to, I need to make more. Yeah. I wasn't treating it as like a real profession, I guess you could say. But I was studying every day for like three months, like in the morning, at nighttime. I had charts on my on my desk. I had sheets on my computer. I was taking it really seriously, but. Yeah, a couple, Do, doing like all the technical week, analysis and everything. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's good to know. My goal is not to tell you what to do. My goal is just to try and give you clarity, try to answer questions, try to run some numbers. And I think that'll give some more clarity. And then hopefully you are one step closer to making a decision. That's what I want to do for you is to help you get okay. a step closer. Can you talk about your financial situation, um, debt, savings, investments? Can you give me like a broad overview? Yeah, I think I have in my bank account if i have 80 grand my fiance probably has like 30 grand i have 16k in crypto investments i have 25k in an individual account which is mostly just in um spy and q stocks 15k in a 401k at my old employer and i should mention about forty thousand dollars worth of counter-strike skins 
30 to 40, 40 grand, yeah. 40K, and that's something yes, you have yes. to mention, right? Because that stuff can be liquid just like that. You can sell that on a third party site and get your money like pretty pretty quickly. Can you can you explain that that whole economy to me? Um so you you can buy cases and how does it work? You can sell yeah, them to so people. You can, you can get the cases for free. Every week you can get a free case. Um, by playing the game, you level up, you get a free case. You can buy a key for it, which is two dollars and forty-nine cents, and whatever you get inside of it is a skin for a weapon. Best thing you can get usually is a knife, the gold at the end, which is one in 400 odds every time you open the case. The knives are usually around 100 bucks, 150 bucks, but you can get pretty lucky and get a really good one. One of the golds I got was worth is worth around like five or six grand. I've opened one worth 14 grand, 12, not 14, sorry, 1400, 1200, everywhere in between. It varies a lot, but basically, um, they're like it's like stocks right they have a whole history of the the skin that skin and it just shows like it'll show like price went up i mean counter strike skins were like this right it's like if you look at the like stock market from like way back when uh -huh. it looks the same it's the same exact thing counter strike blew up in the past like three years skins and the prices increased like crazy like absolutely crazy so right now they're the more most expensive they've ever been pretty much a little maybe a year ago they were a little bit more but they're still they're still really expensive at the moment and it is like a stock like it goes up and down every day there's websites that chart the prices of each skin every single day so wow. it's really comparable to the stock market um although it doesn't make a lot of sense to really anybody including myself <laughs> i try explaining it to my parents they did not understand interesting okay that's good to know so you got forty thousand dollars about forty thousand dollars worth of skins yeah, maybe closer to 30. Okay, so I got a rough idea of your assets. And you mentioned you have no debt. Um, my fiance had some some school debt. I think okay. It was like um, maybe like 20 or 30 grand, but she got that taken care of pretty quick. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think her parents helped out with a little bit, but she had some money saved up from her job. Um, so she paid that off. Um, but I never had any debt. My parents were always really helpful. I mean, I never really bought anything or did any. I didn't spend any money. So, and I got college for free, so. Wow. Yeah. Are you are you you're a naturally frugal person, would you say? Yeah. Besides CS go, cases. I don't, I don't spend any money. Okay. Like I refuse to go to Starbucks. I refuse to go to like when I go to the store, I buy the cheapest chicken. I buy the cheapest I buy the cheapest everything. Except some things. Some things I need to spend a little bit more money because the quality, but like I was gonna say. Yeah. So I would you would you say you're more about value? Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. I like it. That's the way to go. So no credit card debt, no personal loans, car loans, nothing. Uh nope. Nope, nothing. Wow. I have two cars, a truck and a car that are both probably going to die pretty soon. They both have like 210,000 miles on them. Okay. One was inherited from my parents. They had it for a long time. The other was a truck that I bought uh, a couple years ago to tow my, for like 2,000 bucks. Bought it a little while ago to tow my, uh, tow my boat with. I love it. No debt. Wow. Okay. So how about expenses? What does it cost for you to live each month? And we can do this individually you can include your fiance we can do both yeah um i'd probably just do probably just do both because okay. for, well I, I mean she has a lot of like uh little things that she goes and gets done eyebrows hair and um she sees the chiropractor and does stuff like that um so there's little expenses like that that i probably should add up i would i would say an extra 100 or 200 bucks a week maybe an extra 100 bucks a week just to just to be safe um, of stuff that she does but for me nothing like that i think our main expense is two thousand about 2100 for for rent i guess you have internet which is like 100 bucks a month i would say just general expenses probably 2500 bucks a month groceries we're probably spending around like 400 bucks a month on for so both maybe like three yeah yeah Damn, probably. that's really good um i'm telling you i just get chicken and rice it's all i eat that's all i try to eat um, and cereal. That's pretty much it. So I would say, I would say, yeah, those are pretty much our, our main expenses. Um, the Counter-Strike cases are really my, my biggest expense. Um, it's kind of hard to quantify. Well, actually it's not hard. It's, um, I put a hundred dollars in my steam account every day. So whatever a hundred times 30 is, that's 3000, right? 3000 a month. I would say I spend on Counter-Strike cases. Whew. Um, the cases actually cost money as well, but I get them from a third party site. Um, that site gives me money to use. So it's kind of like it's free, but then again, it's not free, but it's like, you know what I mean? It's like kind of the to site, the site gives you money. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 um, so 
I have my Twitch stream where I open cases and stuff like that. And then on Kick, I do like one or two gambling sites right now. Um, and they give me money um, every day to use on the site. And then you basically gamble like CS skins. And uh, they have a marketplace on their site that also has Counter-Strike skins and cases. And I just pull the cases off of there. So it's I kind of factor in the cases for cost, but then again, I kind of don't. Okay. But the keys are the keys are the main thing. So after all that confusion, yeah. I'd how say, much would you say, say you spend per month? Thirty five hundred. Okay. But that's but I obviously get skins from those cases, and those skins are worth money. So and just for just for all the kids getting ideas about this stuff, don't and you don't and I are cases. responsible adults and have a responsibility to. Okay. <laughs> so someone has has never invested, doesn't have any money saved. And they're thinking so, about buying the stuff and thinking it's an investment. What do you what do you have to say to them? Yeah. So if you if you there's a website called CSGO ROI, it'll tell you the return on investment of opening a Counter Strike case. The best you'll find is like fifty percent. On average, you'll get like half your money back. If you spend ten thousand on cases, you'll probably get about five thousand. Maybe open like one or two just to get try to get really lucky, but it's literally just gambling. That's the answer I was looking for. You were talking about how one of your main goals, you and your fiance, is to buy a house. Yeah. So I've I've always been I've always wanted to do real estate investing to rent out a house. My my father's done it. Him and I actually, he bought a house and then him and I spent about half a year renovating it. We kind of did all the renovations ourselves. He's like an iron worker. So he's, he knows uh, he's pretty good with um, that kind of stuff. So the initial idea was to buy a house here, refurbish it for save a little bit of money um, and then rent it out. It's kind of hard to do that. I guess for a couple of reasons, I think the main reason would probably be the cost of a house in San Diego is about a million dollars is the is the average. Interest rates are what are they at about seven percent right now, six or seven percent. And um, it just doesn't seem like a good alternative to putting my money, all my money into a, you know, um, into like a savings account. Yes. Okay. So so you would say your goal is to buy a house just to flip it, turn it oh, into sorry, rental? Like goal, so what's the ultimate? So, my my fiance really wants to i don't care where we live i could live here forever it's a condo okay but we're gonna raise a family eventually hopefully and she wants to have her own house here in san diego so that's that's her goal i'd want that as well but i can be further down the line for me but i would say maybe within six to ten years to live in a house that we own or at least are paying off yeah i think that's probably that's probably a safe safe bet to say so buy a house within five to six years? Um, to be living in, I'd say to be living in. So a primary house. residence. Yeah, yep. To own a primary residence, yep. Because like I said, if it's a good idea to buy a house, then I want to buy one as soon as possible, right? Mm -hmm. um, because I think we have enough money to do that, assuming everything is, is lined up. I just don't know if it's smart financially, investment-wise. Yeah, like to answer the question, it's, it's a little tricky. So if, you're, if someone asks, hey, is it a good idea to buy a house? My question is, well, what are you trying to do? Are you going to live yeah. in it for the next five, 10 years? If so, and, and you can afford it, it's probably a good idea. But if you're planning on, I don't know, selling it and moving out within a couple of years, considering like interest rates and closing costs and all that crap, probably won't be a good idea. So would you have any any shorter term goals with real estate or would you say that's the, the main one you want to focus on? Um, I personally I personally want to own properties. My, my parents own three, our house, my grandmother's house, and then the house that my dad bought. So I'm assuming when they move on, they'll probably give, I'm a, I'm the middle of three kids. So we'll probably each get one. When that happens, an extra like $3,000 in income a month, which can pay for another, um, another mortgage, you know? Um, I kind of like, I kind of like the whole system with real estate investing, how one mortgage can pay for another mortgage, um, so on and so forth. And the place where I live is very easy to get people to move in to places. So that was kind of, a, that's kind of been like a goal of mine. I, I do want to like, start some real estate investing but it just again it just doesn't seem like a good idea in san diego it's just not a good place to be in my opinion it doesn't seem like a good place to um to invest in real estate if you don't have a crazy amount of money yeah i'm not gonna pretend to be a real estate expert because i'm not but when i talk to my real estate buddies they always say that the west coast is probably the worst when it comes to cash flow yeah, yeah. appreciation's awesome right appreciation's crazy mm -hmm. in southern california you know portland seattle but cash flow it's not the game, apparently. Yeah, and, and I think one of the main reasons why I say that is because a lot of really wealthy people have a lot, own a lot of real estate. 
And mm-hmm. I think that's just kind of like you know, something I've noticed with wealthy people is that they typically own a lot of real estate. So yeah. I think that's just always been kind of in my mind. They also have 401ks. They do have 401ks. Uh-huh. They have 401ks. Well. Yeah, that's yes. something you don't really see. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's not, it's not tangible, right? <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. like this tangibility aspect of real estate that people can grasp mentally. My sister, she just like, I don't know, compared to Sog, she just doesn't get it. I'm like, oh, you, right, you're, yeah. you own, you're owning a part of a company. She's like, okay, but like, what does that mean? I'm like, okay, I see what you mean. But with, when it comes yeah, to a yeah. house, she's like, oh no, like that's tangible. You got to live there, right? So, right. Yeah. Can we talk about income? Yeah. So I think I get, it's hard because there's a lot of sources. Yeah. Being a, uh, being self-employed is, is something. Huh? It's yeah, like a roller coaster. Yeah. You never know what you're going to get. It'll be a lot of things that are like, since there's a lot of sponsorships, there's a lot of things that are like a hundred bucks here, hundred bucks there. Yeah. So it's, it's hard to quantify it. Um, but I think in general from Twitch, I get about 25 a month what's the breakdown just, just subs and and sponsorships mostly or subscriptions okay. mostly subscriptions kick is only subscriptions uh twitch there are very few donations so it's mostly just subscriptions yeah sponsorships i don't really have i mean i have a couple i'm sponsored by corsair whether you can believe that or not nice um so they just give me all the gear to use they don't really give me any money okay there's a couple sites that have given me some money to do some do some things but it's not anything more than a couple like I said, a couple hundred bucks here and there. I would say maybe an extra 500 bucks a month and just sponsorships for that. Okay. Um, the the sites that I use on Kick, they give me $600 a day to use on the site. I can withdraw it whenever. Oh, well, not whenever. After playing for about 30 minutes, uh, I can withdraw it. And I don't withdraw it every day because some days I lose, some days I win. So it's hard to say how much I haven't actually looked and this is cash or they have you use it towards something it's, else yeah yeah it's it's uh, it's it's cash yeah okay don't know what the average would be i would say maybe 300 bucks a day three or 400 bucks a day on top of everything else what is that eight grand i'd say maybe eight grand a month cool and then my fiance is a sonographer so she scans pregnant ladies and and other things i'm not going to mention the other things um, but she I think she makes between 60 to 100, just depends how much she wants to work. Like right now she's on the lower end, maybe making probably 60. She's hourly? 70 a year. She is per diem, um, but oh. she's starting hourly in February, which is going to be three days a week, I think 12 hour days. So she's going to have a pretty good schedule when that, when that happens. Okay, let's run some numbers here. Calculator for a mortgage. Now, when it comes to the down payment, people say 20%, people say put the least amount possible. I think the best thing I've heard is try and save 20%. And if you don't want to put 20% down, it's fine. But having that extra cash, uh, super important. Because when my wife bought, my wife and I bought this place, it was more expensive than we thought. Because you got closing costs and all sorts of stuff. And also the, the, the market was crazy when we bought. It was like the tippity top. And so we had to make higher offers than we wanted. And we had to also put like earnest money up front. It was it was a mess. Yeah. So if we just if we go 1.2, 20% is $240,000. Um, you have about was it 100k in cash between you and your fiance? Is that was that about right? Um, yep. Honestly, I wouldn't liquidate if it were me. I would liquidate my investments. I had friends that did that. I don't think it's a good idea to just liquidate your, you know, brokerage account. Maybe if you have some risky crypto bets, you can liquidate that. But if it were me, I would just have a separate stash for down payment. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm fine with cashing it out whenever. It doesn't really matter to me. Holding crypto, I'm not like a crypto guy, you know? So I can cash that out whenever. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So you have 100K cash right now. Um, 20% is 240, so another $140,000. If you do save about 10K a month in a year, it's about 120. And also, where are you keeping that cash? I didn't I didn't keep a note that for that. Ca- so the, the 80 grand I have is just in a bank account. Uh, what bank? Uh, Mission Federal. They better be paying you a high interest rate, Mike. No, I don't think they What's are. The, oh, no. <laughs> no. Okay. I don't, don't worry. Think they are. We got a homework uh, section in this document. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, I was, that's, what, that's what I've been waiting for. Yeah. So open up high yield savings, transfer cash there. Um, and also do some transfer all of it there. Transfer all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then same for your fiance, wherever she's keeping her cash. Because at least, at least, at least earn the max you can, the max you can with money is just sitting there losing value due to inflation, right? Yeah. I think hers is in Chase. Okay. Yeah, Chase is paying like 0.01% APY, and we should be we should be getting at least four percent. That's the target, at least four. Yeah. If you do save about 10k a month between you and your fiance, it's about 120k per year. I mean, you guys are pretty much there at that point. Maybe a couple months. I mean, like 14 months, 16 months, and you're there at yeah, you're 20 percent down for a 1.2 million dollar house. Yeah. So that's part one is a down payment. Now it comes down to. Can you comfortably afford the not only the mortgage, 
but you got property taxes, you got homeowners insurance, you got maintenance, you got repairs, you got all sorts of crap that comes with homeownership. So assuming 30 years, that's 7%, assuming you put 20% down, about $7,500. Yeah. Okay. And based on your monthly income, so we need to also factor in uh, maintenance repairs. We have between 1% and 4% of your home's value. 1% that's about $12,000 per year. Out of by 12, that's about 1,000. And then plus, so ballpark $8,500. Assuming you put 20% down, 30 year fixed, about 7% interest rate. Uh, what's your credit score? Is your credit score pretty good? You and your, you and your fiance? 700, 700, something like that. Okay. Would you say like 700 or 750? Like, because those two um, numbers would make a pretty big difference. I think it's 700, but I don't have any debt or anything. I don't know why it wouldn't be the best, right? Okay. I have two credit cards and they're both always paid off like uh, a couple of days before, two days before payments do and you don't carry a balance from month to month right uh no perfect what does your fiance have in terms of investments does she does she have any retirement accounts no she i, I told her to put some money into uh into like spy like a while ago she has like 400 bucks in there okay. um she she i need to tell her about i guess we were just kind of curious maybe i was waiting till now um to talk to you about it but she doesn't have like a whole lot of money i think she says she has like 30k in her account now because after paying off the, the student loans it was a lot um but i don't think she has anything in in like in investment accounts right now really okay so it sounds like it'd be a good idea to prioritize that for now yeah so d yeah, does she have a what kind of accounts does she have does she have a roth ira brokerage account no What's... she just has an individual okay so another homework assignment here fiance needs to open does her um, employer have a retirement account does she i think they do i think they have a 401k match oh. she works at a hospital i'm pretty sure the hospitals have but she's per diem she's not salary so i think it might be different for her but i'm sure they do offer something similar this one might be a little personal but do you how often do you guys talk about money um, she always she's always curious about how much money we have she has no idea what to do with money Okay. Like she, like, like her, her family has always been like eat out every night. They, they don't like, I mean, I, I'm sure they save a lot of money. Um, but I think just, just her, she's used to spending money. She's used to, she doesn't know how to save it. No, no idea how to save it. She knows not to spend it, but she doesn't know how to like the thought of me spending money on cases is like really scary to her because she doesn't see it as like, I mean, I think she knows it's kind of necessary for my streams and stuff, but, um, Every now and then she'll be like, I don't want you spending too much money on like cases and stuff like that. But, yes. Um, yeah. She doesn't really know, like she doesn't really know much about money at all. Okay. And do you guys have a, you can call it a budget. You can call it a plan. So it doesn't sound like you have, you guys have any kind of plan for your money. Like every month we're going to make however much we make and half of it, we're going to throw at this and another half we'll throw it at this anything like that, yeah, any, any kind of plan. It's pretty much to make as much as possible, spend it on whatever we need to spend it on, have a little bit of fun here and there, um, but ultimately work towards the goal of owning our own home eventually. And I guess having enough money to, to have kids okay. in San Diego. In San Diego. <laughs> you always have to preface it with in San Diego. Yeah. Yep. Southern California, Northern California, just California in general. Yeah. Okay. So would you say on a scale from one to 10, between you and your fiance, what level of stress would you say money is um i would say it's i would say it's short term i'd say it's like a one okay. long term i think it's maybe like a four or five i okay. think we're probably a lot better off than most people our age absolutely um having no debt is insane we both have she has a job that pays well over the the average she can choose to pick up shifts and make way more if she wants to yeah i don't think i don't i would say we don't really think about it too too often Okay, well, that's good. So if I had to give you a, a Valorant rank on, on your finances based on everything you told me, it would definitely be... I would say you're Pretty immortal. Style. I would say you're immortal. You're immortal, really? Wow. Yeah. You guys are doing... You guys have no debt. You have plenty of cash for emergencies. And if you do want to buy, you know, a million dollar house, you can get that down payment based on what you told me probably in the next two years yeah. if you wanted to do that. But yeah, I mean, you guys are doing great. I would plan a little better when it comes to what your money is being used for even if it's simple like some people like to budget every single category i think that's a complete waste of time um i think the best thing uh -huh. you can do is to keep it as simple as possible automate as much as you can and if you want to do like 30 percent of her income if you want to we want to put that towards anything we'd like cool like it's fair game if she wants to go and you know spend it on whatever she wants cool you don't question it if you want to go blow it on whatever you want yes cases cool she doesn't question it yeah 
and just keep it as simple as possible. Yeah, I think I I think right now I'd say I'd put myself at like plat or uh, or diamond. I think once I get the retirement account set up, yeah, I can see I can see maybe maybe immortal. Um, again, I live in San Diego. I remember that. <laughs> yep. Uh, so it's all relative. I think one of the main things I wanted to to know about is when it comes to putting money into a retirement account it's i guess it's tougher when you have the thought of buying a home in mind but like what percentage of my savings would i put into a retirement account and would you ever put money into like an individual account because you probably put so much in an ira every year right yeah so i'll answer that second question first um i always aim to max out at least my roth and we can we can do some math here and really the goal for that is when you retire you shouldn't have to like liquidate your house. You know what I mean? So some people, they go the yeah. complete real estate route. Um, they just, they double down on their house. They fix it up, renovations, and it's just all in their house. It's fine. But when it comes to retirement, like you're not going to have an income, you know? And you talked about having a real estate portfolio. That's a little different. For most people, they want to buy a house. They want to live in it for a long time. So I think it's a better idea to also on the side, in addition to having a home and real estate, having a retirement account. And if you if it's just a Roth IRA, that's fine. If it's 401k, a Roth IRA, a mix of the two, whatever. Um, but if we just look at the Roth, if we do $7,000 this year. And keep in mind, you can also do last year's also. You have up until tax day of this year right, to right. contribute to last Prior year. year. So if we do um, 7,000 every year going forward stock market historically has returned about 10 percent per year and you're 25 right now 25 okay um, how old is your fiance 25 okay cool 60 minus 35 is 35. so you could you could well you could double it right you could do 14 instead of seven. Oh, you're right it's two of us good call well let's let's do both let's um let's see it before yeah. and after okay so yeah if you just throw it into low cost the next one you mentioned you know an s p 500 that's what i do in my roth ira um, so 35 years, about 2 million. So, I mean, if you do it together, obviously 4 million. Um, and then if you go with the, have you ever heard of the 4% rule? I probably have. It just says that each year you would withdraw 4% of your income. You would also right, account right. for inflation. Um, so if you do uh 4.1, I'm having a separate calculator here, so you can't see it, but if you do 4.1 million, I'll round down to 4 million actually. That is about $160,000. So the 4% uh, rule basically year. exactly a year. Yeah. And that's between and that's um, both of you. 60? Yes. Yeah. 60. And we can we can play these numbers, we can go down if you, you know, if you guys want to retire earlier. I think, I think ideal I think ideally it would be um I think ideally it'd be like 50. Okay. Because if we're planning on having kids, I think probably in the next like 3 or 4 years, 2 2 or 3 years, our kids would be about 2021 by the time we're 50 which i think is a good time for traveling and stuff like that okay that's fair enough so that's gonna be about and again none of this is guaranteed for everyone watching we're just using historical data none of this is guaranteed but historically we've seen about 10 percent return from the stock market and this is this is not accounting for inflation so you got to keep that in mind okay so if you do 14 grand every year um 25 years it's about 1.5 million um four percent rule that's gonna be about sixty thousand dollars per year do you think you'd be able to i know it's hard to determine this like 25 years later having kids you don't know what's really going to happen but would you be able to i mean it sounds like you can be it sounds like you're already a frugal person you and your fiance so sixty thousand dollars per year yep. and this is just out of this account so yep. if you're you know if your fiance has a 401k you can contribute there individual brokerage account so one of your questions also was like do you do like what happens when you max out the retirement accounts do you go brokerage account and yeah you would do in my opinion, you would do your IRA, 401k, potentially an HSA if you do qualify for an HSA. Um, and then, yeah, just throw the rest in a brokerage account. So by the rest, you mean instead of instead of a, a high yield savings account? Yeah. So the high yield savings, the only purpose that serves, in my opinion, is your emergency fund. So about right. ideally six months of living expenses. Keep that in there. Yes. I'd keep, I'd keep maybe like 15, 20k in there. Yeah. Yeah, and then so and let's say I could okay, so let's say I have 80k right now. I'd throw 20k in there. I'd throw I can throw 14,000 into an IRA from just my personal money, right? From last year and this year. Yeah, it'd be at 13,500, right? Six. I think last year was 6,500 was the max, and this year is 7,000. Yeah. 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 So then I'd be 35,000. I'd have about uh, 45,000 left to throw into an individual account. And then, yeah, so 45000 in individual accounts. Yeah, and you can take it a step further if you really want to get into like rental properties and stuff, maybe like in the Midwest or whatever. That money you wanted to throw into the individual account, maybe you can draw a line in the middle and 
put half of it or whatever yeah. number you think is yeah. reasonable, right? Right. Yeah. So you can do it all. Like I don't want to like tell you to only do retirement or only do real estate. It's I mean, you can do all of it. It's all great. Yeah. Now I'm saying you go. Huh? I'm saying you go. And I'm saying yeah, yeah. no. You yeah, do, you really you have do, to uh, pick and choose when 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 you live here. Um, yeah, the house the house thing I think is going to have to take a, a hiatus for a while. I'll find out more about the 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 dream for all program because that could be cool. But uh, it just I don't just don't think it doesn't make it doesn't make much sense right now. Um, and yeah, for the for that home, like I said, I mean, if, if you wanted if that's something like five years down the line, I mean, you can you can plan for that, man. You can yeah. you can decide, OK, I have my retirement accounts. I have my um, or just we'll just sell, call it investments. Investments could be retirement accounts, individual accounts. And then I have my rental properties and then I have my primary residence. So you can have three right. buckets, three simple buckets. And you can just allocate accordingly so that the timing matches up. So in five years, you've allocated accordingly and you should have at least a down payment. And again, it doesn't have to be 20%. It can be 15, 10, whatever. Um, and you can have all of it line up. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah that makes sense. The first piece of homework I just put here is, is chat about all this with your fiance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what she's going to say? I'm going to walk out there. She's going to say, uh -huh. so can we buy a house? Or <laughs> <laughs> bring her in right now. Is she here? Let me, let me bring her in. Ron, just. Just tell her we're in a good spot financially. She doesn't have to worry. Okay. <laughs> Here we go, Jess. Talk to Ron. Hey, Ron. Hey, Jess. How's it going? How's it going? So uh, I've been good. good, good. I've been talking to Mike about your financials, and uh, it's not looking so hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You guys are doing awesome. How do you think you guys are doing? If you had to rank uh, rank yourselves, what would you rank yourselves? Uh, I think pretty good, especially now that like all my... Um, like student loans are paid off and stuff. It's pretty nice. Yeah, congrats uh, on that. My priority would be like buying a house next, but like where we live, it's oh yeah, it's yeah. tough. It is tough. Uh, <laughs> San Diego's great though. I love it yeah, down there. Yeah, I couldn't imagine living anywhere else. But um, yeah, I don't know. Just setting like what our main goals are probably is important too. And oh, there was. Did you tell him about that other thing about the housing? Yeah, yeah, I was telling yeah. him. Yeah, uh, I don't know what it's dream called. Dream for all. Yeah. yeah. Dream for all, yeah. I told him we'd get more info and then let him know. Yeah, it's like that first time um, home. First time home buyer. Yeah, whatever. What? But yeah, I don't think so. I don't know if I should also, uh, I don't know what Mike told you too much about my, what I do for work and whatnot. A little bit. But I don't have any of it going to like, uh, like retire, like, what do you call it? Like 401. Yeah. Or like, uh, like all my paychecks just coming to me right now, I guess, initially. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I should invest in like harsh, like maybe like half of my paycheck to go somewhere else. Yeah. Like we talked about savings. that. We did a deep dive on that a little earlier. Um, the answer is yes. Absolutely, yeah. um, invest in retirement, but you basically just will balance it. So with your whatever goals you have. So we yeah. talked about retirement. We talked about um, Mike potentially, you know, investing in real estate like rental properties, and then your primary residence, so the, the home you want to buy in the next. What would you say? What, Mike was talking about maybe five years or so as a timeline. What would you say? Uh, he puts it in perspective of a house that is like a nice house in San Diego, like like one that we can like raise a family in and everything like that like and won't have to buy again so i think like he would was it like six years you were saying because well, he said depend, i think to move in to move into a house yeah something around that point but also we've talked about um like investing in different properties like for renting it out so that could also change the where that falls in ideally i'd want to buy sooner than later but i understand the yeah yeah it's all balance right you uh you balance your goals prioritize yeah. them and then uh just plug a timeline in and then right you're good to go yeah we probably have to talk about that a little bit more <laughs> yeah i have a little a homework section for mike in this document and the first line yeah. is chat with uh your fiance about all this <laughs> yeah for sure he knows yeah. a lot more and does a lot more with the money uh -huh. um then then what i know and what i do yeah and you can automate the whole thing it's like the goal is to keep it as simple as possible that way you know you're not checking the yeah. stuff all the time um and you can live your life you know yeah exactly but did you tell him about like the other expenses like like how my health insurance is super high uh because my job i just work 
per diem. So basically, I don't get health insurance through them right now. Um, I kind of just work the hours that I want during the week until like I want to move like either part time. I don't think I'll ever be full time. Um, but my health insurance, I've had like really bad health issues in the past. Mm. Um, so that is pretty high because I've had to go like get heart procedures like um, out of network. It's technically oh, wow. like referred to. So I had to get a better insurance. So like I think my insurance is like 800 or 900 a month. Oh, wow. That so, is yeah. high. And that's, uh, Mike didn't yeah, tell me about that. I think it's like 800. I didn't know that. No, this is good. This is good. <gasps> the whole point is we just we get all this on paper and you guys have visibility, right? Uh, but yeah, I don't have any other questions. Great. Well, it was, uh, it was nice to meet you. Good. Good yeah, talking to you. you. I'm going to give this back to Mike. All right. Have a good night. Thanks. Uh, me too. Thanks. She's nice. Yeah, I guess I didn't mention the insurance. All good. My job was just to try and give you some clarity. Did we at least do that? Or did I fail? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think I think most of the stuff you said, I think I already knew I okay. kind of needed to do. It's just a little bit better of a, a layout. Let me know if you need anything else from me, uh, Ron. I'll be, I, I'm always around. I need any skin for an AK and M4. Any. I'm sick of okay. the default skin. That's all I want. Oh, that's so sick. Yeah, that's cool, huh? <laughs> that's <laughs> you definitely so need that. Yeah. You definitely need that. There's... There's this one. You like green? Yeah. Green for money. That works. Okay, I'll give you that one. And then the AK skin. Ice cold, this one. Ice cold. That one looks pretty sick. Yeah. You ever use the op? I do. I love the op. Oh, yeah. Okay, then I'll throw in an op skin too. A surprise op skin. Oh, thanks, man. You want to play a round of something? We can play again, Wingman. Yes, perfect. Oof. Easiest game ever. GG. All right, man. <laughs> All right. Appreciate you taking the time. Of course. Have a good night, man. Yeah, you too. All right. Bye. Bye.